G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here for the second part of the Microsoft Word 2013 tutorials. This time we are going to install Office Professional Plus. Well, I'm installing Professional Plus 2013 from scratch. Now, I've already downloaded the files and I've got both versions here, the 32-bit version and the 64-bit version. I briefly talked about it before, but I want to explain it in a bit more detail in a second. If you bought the DVD version of Microsoft Office, it should come with two discs, a 64-bit and a 32-bit. If it doesn't, then I'm misinformed and you just insert the disc. Otherwise, stick around and I'll tell you which version you should put in your system in a second. Now, if you know which system type you have, if your system is a 64-bit version, go straight with the 64-bit. If your system is 32-bit, go straight with the 32-bit. However, if you have absolutely no idea which version your computer is, there's a quick trick to find out. Up here on the left, we've got this PC, sometimes called computer. If you right click on this bad boy, then go down to properties, you're gonna have system type, bang in the middle here. Okay, and it says 64-bit operating system. So 64-bit means I can install 64-bit version of Office. Quick note, I can also install the 32-bit because I have a 64-bit operating system. If this says 32-bit, you have to install the 32-bit. You cannot use the 64-bit. If you can install the 64-bit, excuse me, I'd recommend it because it is mildly quicker than the 32. But anyway, get open your files, get open your folders, jam in your DVDs, get the right versions going. They're all the same. They all do the same thing. And this is the file we're looking for, setup.exe. If you have this on a DVD, chances are this is going to start up automatically. I'm going to double click. It's going to prompt me that I, do I want this to be able to make changes to my computer? And you're going to click yes. So that's all it is. All right, let's agree to the terms. And then finally, we've got two buttons. We've got install now and we've got customize. If you click install now, it's just going to jam the office suite in a default location with default names and titles and with default programs. I'm a big fan of customizing because there's a lot of things I don't install from Office. So I'm going to click on customize and I've got all these different programs that come with Microsoft Office. So this is why Office is known as a suite of applications because it comes with all these different ones. So for example, I do not use InfoPath. So what I do is click on this little icon here and I say not available. All right, I'll do the same thing for Link because I don't use him. I don't use OneNote despite everyone's popularity of it. I don't know. I do not use Outlook. I use Gmail. Um, I rarely use Publisher. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say not available. And if I want to install it, I can change it at a later date. I'm going to keep SkyDrive, but I'm going to get rid of Visio. All right. Those are the programs I want installed. These ones with the little green icon next to them. X's will not be installed. The gray ones mean there are some things which aren't installed. That's all. And we can leave them as default. You can go through these in detail. If you don't know about these programs, you can actually click on them and they'll tell you down the bottom what they actually do. And you can have a read, judge for yourself whether or not you're going to use them. But I've never used these in my life. In fact, I might install Publisher. I, fit, I ran into an issue last year where I needed it. But anyway, that's my setup for my programs. The second thing is your file location, where you want the program files to install. If you are unsure, I want you to leave this and just go to the next tab. If you are really, really certain of where you want these files to go, you can either click browse and find the folder, or you can just type it in. Now, I know where mine's going to go. It's going to go on the D drive, and I've got a folder in my D drive called apps. So I go D colon backslash apps backslash Microsoft Office. Make sure Microsoft Office is on the end and you're good to go. So with that done, I'm going to go to the user information and make sure this is set properly because it's not really set up the way I wanted to. My full name is Nicholas Dingle. My initials are ND and my organization is Department of Education and Training. That's perfect. With those set up, if you're ready to go, if there's no more changes you want to make, you're going to click install now. And you're going to watch the green bar grow across the screen until it hits the back, at which point you're done and you're ready to go. So I'll see you on the other side. G'day everybody, my installation went well. I hope yours did as well. If you did have problems, please comment down below and I'll try and give you a hand. Now, I've actually just clicked the close button to close the installer because it's all done and there's nothing else you can do in it. Now, 
what the next thing is to actually open Microsoft Word, isn't it? For the very first time. So depending on what version of Windows you have, you're going to have to find the program. So if you're running Windows 7, you're going to be looking in the Start button. So if you click on the Start button, you're going to have a look in all programs, and you're going to try and find Microsoft Office 2013. You may have to scroll down that list because it's a folder. Click on that bad boy, and there you go. There's Off Word, sorry, 2013. Click on that, it's going to start Microsoft Word for the first time, but I'm not going to click on it because if you are running Windows 8 or 8.1 for that matter, you're going to have this thing, the start screen. So how the heck do we find it here? Well, down the bottom, we've got eight new apps installed. This is your all apps button, if you don't know. If you click on that, these are all the programs installed on your computer. If I scroll across, there is Word 2013 right there. So I'll click on him and it starts him up for the first time and we get this screen for the very first time and the last time, hopefully. What this is, you have to activate Office the very first time that you use it. So if you bought this thing as a subscription service, type in the email address you use to purchase with it. All right. Now, I didn't actually purchase mine through a subscription. Mine I bought as just a sort of standalone product. So what I got was a product key. So if you got a DVD version, you're going to follow me by clicking on enter a product key instead. And then you type in your product key and over here there should be the install or continue and install button and all should hopefully go well. Now, for some reason, if you don't want to activate or you can't activate today, you can actually cancel this by closing the dialog here. However, what that does is it means you have an unlicensed version of Office and it turns into a trial version. You have 30 days in which to use or to activate the program, otherwise it locks you out and you can't use it anymore. All right, so I suggest activating now. I'm gonna quickly activate my program. I'm not gonna do any more in this video. I'm not gonna show you it activated because it doesn't do anything special. But I'm gonna see you in the next video where we're gonna use the program for the first time. We're just gonna have a quick run through of how you use Microsoft Word generally. And hopefully all goes well. So see you in the next video, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe down the bottom there, everybody. Thank you for watching. See you later.